Samurai Showdown 3, 282 megabits. Now, we come to what I've always felt was the beginning of the decline of the series. Yes, I know some of you are probably going to bite my head off about it, but again, everyone has their own opinions. And remember, I'm not trying to intentionally insult anyone, or which games you like. These are just my opinions as a humble reviewer. Released in 1995 by SNK, Samurai Showdown 3, like Samurai Showdown 2, featured many new changes to the series, many of which would be continued in subsequent releases. Before I continue, I would like to add an update to this version 2.0 of the Samurai Showdown series review. In May of 2018, I took a trip to Chicago and visited Galloping Ghost Arcade. Tons of fun! A cool thing was that I was able to go back and play Samurai Showdown 3, 4, and 5, arcade style, for the first time! So, I will be incorporating that experience into this new review, as I never played those three in arcades the first time through, i.e. back in the 90s. Oh, and I also got to play Samurai Showdown 6 as well. But sadly, I can't really get footage for Samurai Showdown 6, so that's why it's left out of this review as well. The storyline isn't as important in this game as the previous two, although the storyline in any of the games really isn't that important, to be honest. I never even knew there was an actual story to the series growing up. Not till I uploaded the first Samurai Showdown series review did I go back and read the backstories for each game. But let's get on to the fun stuff anyways. Most will notice from the beginning that, visually, this game is very different from its predecessors. Even the intro features a much more aggressive font, with many characters showing up all cut very quickly. This is in stark contrast to the first two games, which had a more quiet opening and just gave you some simple text. Basically more stoic. When you go to select your fighter, again, the aggressiveness returns. This time, in character design. All the characters have received a huge facelift in terms of their design and visual attitude. The main thing I always notice is that all the fighters now have a much more denser animation cycle. Previously, there were slight or very small animations when a fighter was standing still. That's now been completely changed, and each character has a very fluidic, animated stance when just standing still. As I've said the first time, to me, they're overly animated in a sense. It's distracting. Save the fluidic animation for the actual battles, or for performed attacks, not just when the character is standing there. You'll also notice the character roster has been altered. I don't really like the changes. Some people do. I just don't like the roster. SNK omitted very good characters from the previous two games that didn't really need to be cut out. Charlotte isn't here. Tam Tam isn't here. Cham Cham isn't here. Seeger isn't here. Jubei isn't here. Just a lot of great past characters. That's not saying that the new characters aren't good or even great. There was just no reason to cut so many of the previous fighters for no reason. Was SNK limited in the amount of fighters the game could hold? Was SNK limited in the amount of fighters the game could hold? You're limited you're limited to 12 in total. While not less than previous games, there's no reason besides cartridge size to limit it otherwise. It's hard to say as future releases in the series saw the roster increase beyond that. I don't particularly like the new fighters, nothing personal, I just don't like their attacks or even their design. It's not that they're bad per se, I just don't feel they fit the design of the other classic characters as a whole. Next up on the changes list is the addition of Slash or Bust. I know I kinda knocked this new aspect a little roughly the first time around, without really explaining myself, so I'm redoing it. This option, after selecting a fighter, basically gives you the option of two different main control styles. In the most basic terms, Slash can be considered the standard version of the fighter, 
especially in terms of if they are returning from previous titles. Bust features a more aggressive playstyle with different attacks and moves than if you pick Slash. This allows players to play more akin to how they have been up until this release with classic attacks or to switch into a new move set. Or if this is your first game in the Samurai Showdown series. Honestly, I usually choose Slash just because I prefer the original color set for the characters as well as the standard attacks, but everyone is different. Lastly, you have three different grades to choose from, beginner, medium, and upper. This should be self-explanatory. Basically, this determines small attributes within the match, relating to your character. Picking a lower grade gives you more auto-blocks. Yes, auto-blocking was added into this game. Your POW meter, now renamed the Rage Gauge, charges slower, and your attack power is slightly lessened. Conversely, in the upper grade, your rage gauge stays full all the time and is designed for more advanced players, as blocking is nearly impossible. So let's get into the actual gameplay, shall we? You'll notice, probably as easily as I did, that the camera starts out much closer to the fighters. This also gives the impression that the fighters are much closer together. I don't know if this is actually the case. It could be a slight illusion caused by the increased character size. Something about it just feels off. This was also the first game in the series where the controls were radically altered. Up until Samurai Showdown 3, A was light attack, B was medium, A plus B was strong, and C and D buttons were used in the same combination, albeit with kicks. Now, a is light, B is medium, C is now strong attack, and D is kick. And A plus B allows you to do a dodge maneuver around your opponent. While this isn't a world shattering change, I do find the A plus B change especially frustrating. Because in the heat of the moment, I find myself forgetting. Then hitting it for a heavy attack, only to float around the enemy when I'm about to get my ass kicked. I don't mind the change to the kick buttons, because I never really kicked in this game anyways. I'm just saying, there was really nothing wrong with the control scheme of the previous two games. So there really wasn't much of a reason to change things in this game. The blood spurts when striking an opponent are also different, not giving as much as a visceral feeling as in previous games. It happens, but it always seems blotchy to me and doesn't complement the strike in a slashing shape as in previous games. Does anyone else happen to notice the amount of stuff flickering on screen all the time? Before, this was very minimal, if at all. Usually just the POW meter. But now, sometimes the characters are flashing. The verses at the top of the screen is flickering. The POW meter does. Some foreground elements flicker. The light following weapon strikes flickers. It's almost seizure inducing sometimes. Even whole characters flash once your health gets low enough. At one point, I thought that maybe it was a programming issue, but it isn't. The game is designed that way. Visual style choice, I get it. I do have to say that backgrounds have been tremendously improved, especially stages like Galford. At the same time, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. In the first two games, Galford always fought near the docks by the ocean, whereas now it takes place on some wooden bridge out in the jungle in front of a waterfall. I don't know. Still looks great though. Reaching Zankuro, you finish the game and receive a small story epilogue depending on each character. Overall, Samurai Shodan 3 improved on things both gameplay-wise and graphically-wise. But some of the changes feel unneeded. Many of the changes that SNK made seem to have been made without much reason to. Like they just changed stuff because they thought it looked cool, not because it was warranted from fans or other sources. Ultimately, a lot of these changes would stick with the series for future releases. Some would be reverted to how they were in the beginning, luckily. Samurai Showdown 4, 378 megabits. Now, this is really where I started to leave the series in the dust. Not because they weren't bad, mind you, 
but this was around the time that the PlayStation and N64 were in full effect. And this was also the time we started to see the decline of arcades as a whole. Again, not saying this game is bad overall, but, well, you'll see once I get into it. Taking place chronology-wise in between Samurai Showdown 3 and Samurai Showdown 2, yes, timeline-wise, Samurai Showdown 2 takes place after Samurai Showdown 3. But anyways, Samurai Showdown 4 would see a few new improvements in the series. But mainly, it was just a polished version of Samurai Showdown 3, if you're asking me, at least visually. The storyline is that Amakusa, from the original game, has returned, and is running amok. Pretty simple, yeah? Your main cast of characters returns, with the classic characters, Haomaru, Hanzo, Galford, etc., all present with much needed characters also making a return that were skipped in the previous release, such as Tam Tam, Charlotte, and Jubei. The majority of the controls are also carried over from Samurai Shodown 3, however, I don't have a problem with this at all. Aerial blocking was removed, the step around move was also removed, thankfully. However, the slash bus mechanic is retained, as is the grade choice during character selection. A new addition to the standard controls is that if you press C plus D together, instead of normally performing a strong kick, you'll now perform a 3 to 4 hit combo. Not too shabby, but I find it to be a little more than a novelty, as the standard controls from the first two games never failed me, and work incredibly well without needing to be altered. But that's SNK. Visually, the game looks very similar to Samurai Shodown 3. That's not an illusion, and no, you're not seeing things. Turns out, in doing research for this upgraded version of my review, that SNK basically just carried over most of the sprite assets from Samurai Showdown 3, including characters and backgrounds. Take the background of Yukio's stage, normally one of my favorites. In this game, the background has been toned down, so to speak so that the waves in the background only contain around 4-6 to six frames of animation, as opposed to earlier games where the waves crashing were much more vibrant and fluidic. No pun intended. Also new to this game is the addition of a second health bar. Why did SNK do this? Uh, not really sure. Maybe to make the matches last longer? It's also very strange that the health bars are flashing all the time. Again, I don't know why it does this. It's very visually distracting. Because normally, in most Neo Geo fighting games, your health bar only flashes when you're close to death. So you can easily pick it out with your peripheral vision. Now, I find myself constantly glancing at the health bar because it's flashing all the time. You don't really know how much health you have in comparison to being close to dying. Another aspect of fighting in this game is multi-hit combos. Around this time, we started to see many fighting games that started to go beyond the normal 2 to 3 hit combo, such as Street Fighter 2, and branch out into combos that now started to hit enemies well into the 10 to 15 hits range. While I do see it as an evolution of the fighting genre, it really doesn't add much to this series, where more calculated, stronger, single, or double hit combos were usually the preferred method of taking out an enemy or other player. Now we have these three to six second long chain attacks that don't really do anything other than providing a visual display of multiple slashes while the opponent just gets pummeled. Other than those few things, the majority of the game is much like Samurai Showdown 3 as I previously mentioned. Released in late 1996, this would be the last Samurai Showdown game we'd see from SNK for quite a while, as the next version of the game, Samurai Showdown 5, wouldn't see released till sometime in 2003, nearly seven years later. Truth be told, this would be the last Samurai Showdown game the original SNK would be responsible for, as later releases were after the SNK Playmore merger and or other companies would take their shot at the franchise. It was ported to a few different systems of the time, including the original PlayStation and the Sega Saturn. 
I never owned this game when I owned my Neo Geo AES, mainly because I felt the series didn't really improve that much past the second game. I don't want to sound like I ruled this game out based solely on nostalgia. Hell, I was still only 19 when I bought my Neo Geo. But the series just didn't keep to its roots like it should have. There were so many things that worked perfectly with the first two games. And SNK just seemed to be on this rush to not only produce games at a faster rate, but also incorporate elements from other fighting games of the time, instead of just standing alone with the masterpiece they had created years earlier. Samurai Showdown 5, 708 megabits. So, we finally get to the end of the line. Or, should I say, the end of the classic era. Meaning, Samurai Showdown games released on the Neo Geo AES. Samurai Showdown 6 was released in 2006, but it only ever came out in arcades and on the PS2. So I feel it doesn't count as part of the original saga, as it were. But let's get back to Samurai Showdown 5. While it would go down as one of the last games ever released on the Neo Geo platform, Samurai Showdown 5 was released in 2003. As this was after the downfall of SNK proper in 2001. Samurai Showdown 5 was developed by the newly formed SNK Playmore, with development duties falling to a company called Yuki Enterprise, who had previously worked on simulation and board games up until that point. This section of the review is going to be shorter than the previous games as this will be mostly information based, and on top of that, there isn't much to talk about either. Let's be honest, by this time, the series had fallen from grace, and SNK either should have returned to what made the original games awesome, or just leave the series alone. The majority of elements from previous games remain unchanged, however, one of the most significant changes is the removal of the slash bus mechanic that had been in place in Samurai Showdown 3. There were a few new characters added, none really noteworthy. Most of the classic characters return, and pretty much look as they did in the previous version of the game. Now, to be honest, I never played Samurai Showdown 5 when it first came out. I didn't even know the game HAD come out. I didn't end up playing it till years later in MAME. It's not that it's an overall bad game, but just... The gaming landscape had changed so much in the mid-2000s that a weapon-based fighter didn't really have much interest then. Or at least, not in a major way. Or not without a major following. Which, by the time this game came out, either older players didn't know about it or had moved on, and newer gamers probably didn't care. Visually, the game really hasn't changed much from the previous two games. Characters are nicely animated, although they do have the overly animated style of Samurai Showdown 3. Backgrounds are nice, but I find they really don't have the tremendous depth that the first two games had, with characters and other tidbits in the background that really made them a treat to look at. Thankfully, the controls have been returned to their original layout, more or less. Audio, again, is pretty much unchanged from previous games, and there really aren't any standouts in terms of music or sound effects. Overall, Samurai Showdown 5 wasn't a bad release in terms of a fun game. It doesn't really add anything new, or does anything to reinvigorate the series in any way. It came out during a time when SNK or SNK Playmore, or whoever owned the rights, really should have went about the series in a different way. Perhaps a collection of all the games, including the new release, would have been a better idea. They could have appealed to older fans, plus given newer interested gamers something fresh. I mean, they did end up doing this with the release of the Samurai Shodan Collection in 2009 on various systems of the time. But that's it. It was almost 10 years ago, and it's never been re-released on newer consoles or in any newer versions. Samurai Showdown and the games that make up the original series, a la Neo Geo Hardware, still to this day are a favorite among retro, old school gamers, and many new ones as well. There have been many changes to the franchise over the years, and it seems, at least at this point, that SNK has retired the series to the pages of history, 
as there has been no new game in the series in 10 years. Update! As of recording this audio, SNK has made a tremendous announcement! Yes! Samurai Showdown is returning! I gotta tell you, I was a little skeptical when I first heard about it, but after seeing the trailer, holy shit! Woohoo! Back to the review. It was one of the greatest games back in the arcade days, and was the first machine to come out that seriously challenged Street Fighter 2 in terms of greatness in the arcade scene. Its effect on the 2D fighting series is undeniable, and its lineage is nothing to scoff at. While the series did start to fall from grace by the beginning of the 2000s, before that time, it was at the top of the game, as was SNK too. I think it was a case of a game company racing too fast to keep up with the times, and not sticking to what made the series legendary in the first place. Other fighting games have successfully made the transition to 3D, but Samurai Showdown didn't, and honestly, it never really needed to. I have tons of great memories playing these games before social gaming became relegated to the home, and during a time when it was all about standing shoulder to shoulder with friends, or competing with total strangers. Samurai Shodan 2 in particular is my favorite of all time, and even now, 26 years later, I still have a blast playing it now and then. Most of the games have seen digital releases on today's current gen consoles, although they're pretty much bare bones releases. I think the series as a whole would benefit from a true update. Not really an HD makeover, so to speak, as usually sprite-based games don't really benefit from that type of overhaul, but re-release the entire anthology, featuring all six games, including Samurai Showdown 5 Special. Include widescreen support. Include background information on each game's planning and development process. Maybe have concept art and SNK interviews. Maybe technical data? Wouldn't that be awesome? And that's the thing that's always bugged me about this series as a whole. The mystery. Nobody really knows the original members of SNK that made the game. Who designed it? Who composed the music? What troubles they had making it? The limitations? What were the original designs? Etc. Perhaps even producing a history book on the origins of the series and the series entire would be a welcome addition. There seem to be many books being released nowadays focusing on older retro hardware or game series that are incredibly well produced. We can all hope someday in the future. As before, thank you so much for watching, thanks for subscribing, please go play any games of this legendary series and you'll thank me. Many of which could be continued in subsequent releases. Many of which, many of which would be, many of which would be continued in subsequent series. Many of which would be, many of which would be released. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs>